The views expressed on the following broadcast do not necessarily reflect those of KHLT, Take 12 Radio, or our affiliates. The opinions on this show should not be considered as medical, psychological, or professional advice and are those of the host, co-host, and guest. Take 12 Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting are not affiliated with any particular 12-step fellowship. And now, here are your co-hosts, Eve D., Bruce H., and the Monty Man. Yes, indeed. Welcome aboard, all you happy, peppy people. <clears throat> I have a cold. Eve is feeling a little under the weather. Bruce is mentally insane. And Roger's here. Hi, Roger. Hi, Roger. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Roger. Glad to be here. Roger M. from Huntington Beach is uh, is joining us. Flew all the way up here just to see Bruce. What do you think about that, Bruce? Huh? Well, I'm glad he made it. <laughs> <laughs> I am, too. It's, it's, it's nice to be seen. It's nice to be seen. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry you're feeling under the weather, Eve. Thank you. That's never any fun. No. That's for sure. You just feel like... Right? That's, that about sums That's it up. That about sums it up. <laughs> well, Roger, Roger flew up uh, on, uh, on Friday. We picked him up at the airport. With Shane and Jen, and then we headed on up to the Lifeline Connections alumni event at Clark College in Vancouver and met up with recovery comedian Bob Perkel and did that whole thing and ate bad pizza and <clears throat> and just had a, had a ball. It was it was really a lot of fun. And uh, just a, a shout out to Chris Attaway and all the folks at uh, Lifeline Connections uh, and Bob Perkel. Thank thank you so much. It was it was great. Um, maybe next year we can we can all go up. It, it, it's just it's just good because it, I don't know if you knew this, Roger, but there there were secular twelve steppers and Christian twelve steppers and and non twelve steppers, other kind of steppers and everything. But did you notice there wasn't any right fighters? I did indeed. It was uh, it was a blessing. In fact, I I love those sorts of settings, and it's, I think it's the way it should be. Yeah, yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. I got to get you to come closer to your mic. There you go. Okay, there we go. Good. So that that was that was a lot of fun, and it was made for a very long day, but it was very cool. And Roger goes back tomorrow. I do. I back, go back to Southern California tomorrow. Back to Southern, sunny Southern California. That's and I'm where not I'm taking heading. your and illness. That's where you're back. heading. Yeah, Long Beach. That's where I'm lo- moving to for an indefinite amount of time. Right, because you're no, you're to... no, you're not. You're moving to yes. Long Beach. Mm-hmm. Take care of my dad. Take care of oh, my dad, wow. who's very sick. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. Well, you have that. to come visit our church. I actually am looking for a church to hook up with right away. Recovery like church. Just saying. Yeah? Okay. I lived in Newport, you know. I'm sorry. Oh, you did? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. When did you live in Newport? Uh, 15 years ago. Newport, California. Newport Beach, not Newport, Rhode Island. Or Newport, Oregon. Yeah. No, Newport, yeah. Southern California. From my house, out the front window, you can see Catalina. Well, I'm about f- 10 or 15 minutes from there. Yeah. Just gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Place. Beautiful. And millions of people. Yeah, so you, sh- you should connect with, with Roger. Yeah, you bet. Recovery Church. Mm-hmm. Very cool, very cool. Uh, this week, Understanding Step 11... Saw it through prayer and meditation. We used to always say jokingly, saw it through beer and medication. <laughs> because that's what we used to do. Uh, and it wasn't to improve our conscious contact with God. Although I will say, if you were in the, you know, grew up in the 60s, it was, you know, we're going to take this drug or whatever and find God. You know, and some people claim they did. Mm-hmm. You know, I never did. I, <laughs> I just ended up waking up. Someplace I didn't know that how I got there. Actually, I did, but it wasn't the way I thought it was going to happen. There, there you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be talking about step step eleven, uh, improving our conscious contact with God as we understood it, praying only for knowledge of His will and the power to carry that out. And, uh, and so it's, it's it's fun to have Roger with us. Uh, Roger's helping us co-host this show, and he's going to help co-host Friday show, which we take later on today too. Um, so this Friday coming up is um, a gentleman by the name of Rocky Rosen. He is the cigarette whisperer. The cigarette 
whisperer. That, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, so did I. I went cigarette whisperer. Yeah. So Rocky claims that he can uh, he can get you to quit smoking in about five days and never ever go back. So we're gonna find out what that's all about. So if you're out there and you're curious. <clears throat> Uh, so, so Rocky will, will be on the show uh, and uh, be, be sharing with you. And, and I don't think it's a you know one of these magical miracle quick fix things. He actually has a legitimate uh, a method, and it's been tried and proven with a lot of people. So be looking forward to that. All right, just for so the listeners know, um, Eve, uh, pray for Eve. For those of you who believe in prayer and, and practice prayer, um, she's really sick. She she had to excuse herself. Uh, and that's just not Eve. And she's not going to excuse herself from the show unless she's really, really sick. So we just give her kudos for showing up at all. So uh, we're praying for Eve. Uh, get better, my friend. Uh, all right. So we're going to uh, we're going to take our our first break. Get that out of the way. And when we come back, Cecil's got trivia for us. Yay, Bruce! Trivia, Bruce. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so don't go away. We'll be right back. When you hear that bell, you'll know it's time for Recovery 101. Recovery 101 with Bruce, Shelley, and Mark is a recovery broadcast based loosely on 12-step recovery programs. But it's less like a meeting and more like going to coffee afterwards. You know, the meeting after the meeting. Your hosts used to suffer from insanity, but now they absolutely, unapologetically enjoy it. That's right. For incredible fun and informative recovery radio, tune in to Recovery 101 at recovery101.com. Net on your internet dial. Men, women, and their families experience tremendous pain and suffering due to struggles they face from substance abuse and its co-occurring mental health challenges. They need to find a safe place for peace and healing. Therapia Addiction Healing Center was born out of a deep desire to provide a safe and powerful healing environment. To speak with an addiction specialist, call our toll-free number 24 hours a day at 855-652- Four three two five. And now it's the quiz of the week. Well, that's right, Monty Man. We have Roger with us this week, and we're going to see if we can stop in and. On some Pig 12 Recovery Trivia, brought to you this week by the 12 Step Gazette. This is their website at 12stepgazette.com. That's right, it's Bruce's favorite show. Did he say he was actually going to try to stump the uh, uh, co host Roger? Yeah. Oh, thank you, Cecil, for not picking on me today. Well, we know something you don't know, but I'll tell you about that is later. Okay. It's, you're going to be really mad at me. <laughs> All right. Here is uh, Take 12 Trivia Question number one. Okay. We have two 11-step um, trivia questions and two useless trivia questions. Number one, step 11 states that we should not be shy of what? Here are your choices. A, spirituality, B, prayer, or C, carrying the message. Roger? Prayer. Be prayer. What do you say, Bruce? We should not be shy? Yes. We should not be shy of what? A matter of prayer, I think we'd leave to. Prayer? All right, you both get a bell. Yay, got that right. Number two. In The Wizard of Oz, uh, there's a reference to lions, tigers, and bears. In the big book, in step 11, there's a reference to worry, remorse, and? Worry, remorse. Anxious. It's something we need to be careful of not falling into. Worry, remorse, and... Well, reflection. Morbid reflection. Okay, what do you say? Morbid reflection. You both are correct. Very good. All right. Useless trivia I'm question. I'm glad you explained that to me. <laughs> <laughs> Useless trivia question. This is number three. When, when walking a cow... <laughs> I don't walk cows. <laughs> Cecil, I don't walk cows. <laughs> When walking a cow, they will follow you most everywhere, except, <coughs> excuse me, A, into water, 
B, to the edge of a cliff, or C, downstairs. Bruce? Well, what in the world? <laughs> <clears throat> I don't believe a cow would go downstairs. What do you say, Roger? I don't believe a cow would go downstairs nah, you either. you guys are correct. <laughs> they won't go downstairs. <laughs> but they will go upstairs, surprisingly enough. Move like a cow, Bruce. <laughs> All right, and here's your bonus. Uh, launching forth the bonus with worthless, worthless trivia. There are no words in the dictionary that rhyme with the words orange, purple, silver, or month. Is well, that what? There are no words in the dictionary that rhyme with the words orange, purple, purple. Silver or month? Is that true or false, Bruce? I have no clue. I'll take and a stab at it. I don't agree. You don't agree? Okay. Is that true or false, Roger? I'm going to say true. True? Bruce, sorry. <laughs> and Roger gets a bell. Very good. <sighs> no words that rhyme with them, huh? Nope, no words. Not in the dictionary. They rhyme with orange, purple, silver, mm -hmm. or month. Well, there you go. Yeah. That takes care of Take 12 Trivia for this week. Aren't you glad, Bruce? I'm going to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> All right, we will be right back with the topic, Understanding Step 11. As soon as this runs out. All right, don't go away. Christ-centered faith-based solutions for youth, adults, and families struggling with life-controlling problems such as addiction. Drugs and alcohol allowed me to let go of the bundle of fears that were always with me, even if it was just for a little while. But pretty soon I was deep in addiction. After an overdose almost left my son without a mom, I finally decided to come to Teen Challenge. Although I was away from my family for a long time, it was the best decision of my life. Today, I'm clean and sober, and God has more than restored my family. He's transformed it. For more information and to locate a Teen Challenge Center near you, visit TeenChallengeUSA.com. Com. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? They're not movie tough guys, just ordinary people doing something extraordinary. They're all signed up on matchingdonors.com, willing to donate their kidney to anyone who needs it. In the U.S., 19 people die each day waiting for an organ transplant, most of them for kidneys. Matchingdonors.com improves those odds by finding living altruistic donors for patients desperately needing transplants. Go to matchingdonors.com and meet some extraordinary people. That's matchingdonors.com. Welcome back to the show. One way out. One way out. If you haven't found that way out yet, uh, let me let me encourage you. Uh, that there most literally is a way out, and uh, you know one of the one of the questions I ask in, in my office at the church when I talk to people, and I know Bruce asks this too when people uh, talk to him about, uh, you know, gosh, I want to stop drinking. You know, and the question is, what if you can't? Mm -hmm. What if you can't? And uh, we just may have a solution for that. There may be one way out, right, Bruce? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so that's that's the good news. That's the good news. So when we realize that we're hopeless and we don't know what that one way out is, that could be a good place to be. If you want to open the book up to page 45 and it'll tell you what the book's about, and, you know. Yeah. And that's the way out. The way out. Well, yeah. listen, we're talking about understanding step 11 uh, this week. Uh, step 11 states, sought through prayer and meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him. Again, reminding you as we understood him is a progressive thing. It's like I'm thinking about the milk I'm going to buy as I walk to the store. It's not as I create God out of my understanding. Please don't get confused about that. Um, praying only. 
Well, that's a pretty strong statement. Praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry that out. And Bruce, I'm going to let you take off on this. But I just want to say before you do, we don't, you know, this is kind of, this is strong language. Praying only for his will because we have ours getting in the way even when we pray much of the time. And we'll talk mm-hmm. a little bit more about that. But Bruce, I want you to go ahead and, and launch us forth on step 11. Well, let's go right back and start from the very front to improve our conscious contact. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the terminology we'll use for right now. And where people get confused, I think, is they believe that part of step 11 is, 10, is step 10. And that's where they take this review you know, of the of the night and then the day, mm-hmm. you know, and they do that and they think that's step 10. That's, they're wrong. They don't understand step 10 or step 11. And you talked about that last week, that step 10 is very possibly the most misunderstood step and step mm-hmm. 11 comes right behind it. Or they'll say to you, well, I use 10, I mean 11, to do 10. And it's because you're, you've misunderstood the step. Step 10 is about growing, and it's about, you know, uh, improving our relationship. And we do that by looking at ourselves and, like, doing four from four to nine. Mm-hmm. You know, you continue to do that as a way of living, and right. it should continue for a lifetime, it says. So that's we use that as a method by which to look at ourselves where we can go to God. With a different heart, you know, with a yeah. with a humbleness that we we've never had before. So, what I believe step eleven is all about is to grow in that conscious contact with Him. So you at night you you think about the the day, you know, and what you could have done better, and you thank Him for it. And you're able to go to bed with peace, you see. So it's in its right order because we think it's out of order. Then when we wake up, we've already reviewed that and knew what we did. And we ask him to guide us and to help us be a better man and to set right to those things that which we can. Mm-hmm. You see that from the day before. So we, we set out. And what we're trying to do, if you... Just stop that, is grow our conscious contact with him, learn to trust him, learn to walk with him, however you want to word it. See, that's what step 11 is about, is about growing. If it's our spiritual condition is what keeps us sober, this is how we learn to grow, for we can stay sober. Okay? Okay and we grow in that relationship, we're not going to... If we learn to trust and to walk with God, our attitude with him and who he is is going to change as we develop this relationship. It's a spiritual thing. Yeah. And I believe that's what step 11 is all about. And that's why it has what it does. And, of course, it goes into the other thing. But the very first part of that's the important part. It's about growing. Yeah. In that relationship with him. And that's what step 11 is all about. It's not step 10. It's not using step 11 to do step 10. Right. It's step in itself. Right. See? And this, once again is a continuing to grow step. This is not a maintenance step. Right. Well, and we I, misunderstand that a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. hard for guys like you and me because, right. you see, but people say that and then we want to get in these arguments about that. Right. I've, I've long since stopped that yeah, one, but I yeah. agree with you. Yeah. It's a growth. It's not, I don't like maintenance. You're just not polishing the car in the garage and maintaining it. You're actually driving the thing around. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. moving, you're growing, you're progressing. So there's another piece in there that says this, and then I'm going to let the other co-host talk a little bit here. It says, go to your priests, your rabbis, and your ministers and ask them for other, you know, material to read. So I did that. Mm-hmm. 
And they gave me the Bible in my case. Yeah. Okay. And so now what I do is that's my foundation to grow in my faith, in my Christianity. That's what I use, the Bible, biblical things. AA, the big book, is what I use to teach and to help people with the steps. Right. It's just that simple. Now, I can use the Bible, I'm telling you, for that too, but I don't. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for that. Because we come at all different facets. One don't know how to walk. One doesn't trust. One hates. One loves him, but don't know why he doesn't love him back. You see? All sorts of things. Yeah. But the steps work for all of them. <laughs> yeah. 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 Roger? They do indeed. The steps work for all of them. You know, our, we were talking about Mickey B. And yeah. one of his acronyms is, you know, STEPS, S-T-E-P-S, Solutions to Every Problem Sober. And then he follows that up by saying, you know, if you don't use the steps, you're nuts, N-U-T-S, not using the steps. Yeah. And I find that step 11 is a dynamic, it's, a, it's an ongoing grow by grow, day by day, moment by moment, being in contact with our Father. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that we, he's got stuff for us to do. And if we don't have that communication, the concept of thy will be done is absent. And so it's my will again. So Ooh, praying to good. God, <laughs> constant, you know, prayer is an interesting thing because people have a weird concept. You know, you have to get on your knees. You have to go in a corner. In, th in our program, it's a moment-by-moment -moment awareness of his creation, his, his brother, you know, the people that he's created that put, he puts in our path, the things that are going on like this radio show. I am so grateful to be part of all of this. And without the 12 steps, I wouldn't have been. I would have missed all of this wonder. And so I just walk around being blessed and grateful, thanking God all the time. People ask me, how are you, Roger? And I go, I'm blessed. And then sometimes I'll say, even when I don't think so. Because even when I don't think so, the fact of the matter is I am. And so... Yeah. We were talking earlier about gray and, you know, gray, black and white and gray. And I just, I know that I know today. Right. And I didn't right. know what I didn't know when I got here, but I thought I did. <laughs> yeah. I say that just a little differently, but mm -hmm. I think I'm saying this very same thing Roger mm -hmm. is saying. And what I say is that if I do these 12 steps, if I apply these principles in my life, then I see my need for God. Right. Amen. Shape. Right. And that's what Roger's saying. He prays. He talks to him. He grows with him. You know? you know, it's like if you have a relationship with your father on earth or your best friend or your wife, whoever, you're talking to him all the time. It's a two-way mm -hmm. thing. So we're praying to him and meditating as being quiet so we can hear him. And then we're in this community, in our case, Alcoholics Anonymous. Mm -hmm. He's talking to us all the time at every, every meeting or wherever we go or working with a sponsee or whatever it might be. If I've done this... And I've got that sort of relationship, mm -hmm. and I'm doing that. Don't you think I'm going to treat Roger differently? Yes. Yes. Than I would if I didn't, if, if I you... wanted my own selfish needs met. You know, if, if, if I was more worried yeah. about my agenda than Roger's agenda. Which uh, goes back to what, the point you were talking about anonymity. Caring oh, yeah. enough about the other person to put your stuff aside. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's that. That's not what we usually default to. No, oh. you know our our nature is looking out for us. Exactly. Yeah. See, that's why. That's why people like Roger, when he's talking, he's he's talking about recovery and the beauty of it because he understands what's behind him. Yeah. You know, he knows what what pushed him to start this and if it, and I'll even say it and then we'll see if he agrees with me is because of the pain and the suffering and what we call step one a lot of times mm -hmm. you know what I mean and that's what usually propels us to start going forward sure he, because we, he just we just can't take it no more you know yeah is that true Roger when you when I finally got here and admitted that I was the problem and began the process and asked a man to take me through the steps, um, my life drastically began to change. 
Mm-hmm. And, and as you continue through the steps, you grow. You know, it's that line about you're either growing or you're going. I get that today. People used to say that early on when I came here. I didn't know what they were talking about. I completely get it today. We're either getting closer to God or we're going away from him. There isn't any in between. There's no neutral. And there's no park either. You know, we're either going or we're growing. We're going one way or the other. Yeah. No park. Did you hear him? Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. And so... I'm just so grateful about this process and this program. Um, And when you know the very thing that we were seeking out there before we got here was to have some peace. We didn't even know that. Well, when you know that you know that you know that you're doing precisely what your Heavenly Father wants you to do in the confines of Alcoholics Anonymous with helping somebody else, that gives you complete peace. Yeah, Yeah, when you're growing in the wisdom of His will and trying to... Seek that instead of your own, what you want. Yeah. The, uh, a, a different world opens up to you. Mm-hmm. You see, you start to care about other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I do care. I, yeah. I didn't used to care. I just cared about what I could get from you. Mm-hmm. I didn't even realize that when I got it. I had no idea how self-centered and selfish and self-seeking Maybe I was. Me. I had no clue. When I read that line, self-centered had to be smashed or it will kill you. Yeah. Went, Whoa. That's pretty straight and direct. Right, right. God either is or he isn't. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's a... Sp- he is. Yeah, because we, 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 we kind of grow up. I mean, I grew up, and my, my dad was, was a great man, a lot of integrity. You know, he wasn't a Christian until years later, but but he used to teach me, and I, I believed it. You know, no one's going to watch out for you but you. So that taught me self-reliance, yeah. and self-reliance almost killed me. And people, if, you, if you're if you sitting around and somebody's telling you the lies that that you have to be so old or you can't be a young person or you you have to have experienced all this horror right. before you could have this thing. It's not true. Right. It's right. not true. I got it at 60. Okay, 60 years old mm-hmm. when this thing came to me in its fullness. And I know people that got it at 40. And what about Bill and Bob mm-hmm. themselves? They weren't 60. You right, see, right. so there's all stages, and it's a question about: Do you want to change, and are you willing to do what we did? And that's the steps. You see, but most of us don't want to do that because we don't want to do one. We don't want to admit we're powerless to anything. I was never willing. Yeah. <laughs> to do anything, yeah. I was never open-minded. I was rarely, if ever, rigorously honest about mm-hmm. anything. I would lie about stuff when there was no reason to lie about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't even realize that until I got a little sober. You know where the, the best <laughs> definition of honesty for AA I ever heard? Where you're at today. Well, I'm a big believer that you live in mm-hmm. the moment you're in because it's mm-hmm. the only moment we have. And if we do that moment... The best that we can with God, it's marvelous. You know, 24 hours a day, one day at a time, is a long time for some of us. And if I'm trying to get through 24 hours and missing the moment I'm in with God and the connection, I'm missing the whole program. Yeah. We're, we're doing a lot of talking about this here, and I'd like to make clarify one thing with my own little story. Yeah. Just a little short one here. When I'm not doing what you're talking about when I'm not growing and I'm not you know living in his will or seeking his will automatically it seems that I revert back to what I want so I go off base I go up some people call it I come off the beam Mm -hmm. but see I know how to get back today that's the marvelous thing so we're going to wander but automatically I seem to defect to this Selfish and self-centered mode. It's our it's our nature, as as it says in right step five. To our our nature. nature is our problem. Yeah, okay. and and Silkworth said it very plainly. When we start to fade from the program or from our connection with God, we become restless, irritable, and discontented. Yeah. Yes, we sure do. Mm-hmm. And that's sober, by the way, people. That's sober. Yeah. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, sober. Right. Yeah, we're not drinking yeah. to get and, 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 and you know, I may just say, and some people may disagree with me, but but at least at least my story, you know, the majority of, of my dysfunction and the majority of my hell was not when I was drunk. It was when I was sober. Yeah. Yeah. And and either it was it was actually true, or at least I was perceiving it to be that way. Yeah, it's but it just was that the sober. alcohol didn't help that after a while. No, see, but it, no. Not, yeah. well, if the person stopped and think for a minute, yeah. When yeah. we look, when we reflect on that, ultimately it never helped us. I mean, we had some fun. Yeah, but it wasn't truth. Mm-hmm. It was not truth. No, no. Um, and, and so you know, Bill does it again. He brings this up over and over and over again, and I think he had a, a real clear understanding. That we learn by repetition, but we're not going to listen if we if he says the same using the exact same words every time we go. Oh, here we go, but 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 here we go. When it comes to these issues, he does use these a lot. Uh, when we're talking about re- when we're tiring at night, uh, we constructively re- review our day. Constructively, so we're gonna we're gonna say some things here. We're gonna look at some some statements that can be misconstrued as very destructive. But he wants us to take a look at these in a constructive manner, not to beat ourselves up over them. Uh, were we resentful? See, and I want to go, man, I was resentful. What a loser I was today. That's not constructive. You know, so let, let's just do a fact-finding mission once again. Selfish, dishonest, afraid. Do we owe an apology? Have we kept something to ourselves which should be discussed with another person at once? Were we kind and loving toward all? I mean, see how these things can be turned and we can really beat ourselves up. And I think that's why he said, now be constructive. This isn't about tearing yourself down. This is about, you know, looking, just taking an honest self-assessment. That's all. Uh, and, and, he, and then he continues. And then uh, later, at the next paragraph, he talks about upon awakening. Right, Bruce? And, you know, let us think about the 24 hours ahead. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin, this is what I love. Before we do anything, and that's what I love. Some people say, I get down before I get up. You know, I think Mike D said, you know, he, that's what he does. You know, he puts puts his slippers in under the bed. So he, before we begin, before we begin what? Before we even begin considering our plans for the day, because he just said that. We consider our plans for the day. Before we begin considering our plans for the day, We ask God to direct our thinking. We don't ask God to do what, Bruce? Join us in our plans. Our plans. God, I welcome you in my day. Well, thank you very much. You know, I made the day, you dip. (laughs) Thank you for inviting me. Especially asking that it be divorced from self-pity, dishonesty, or self-seeking motives. Why? Because that's what we do. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, I'm like, what, what, this guy. This guy was so insightful, and I think, I think because God was using him. Yeah, if you've done the work, you've got a pretty good idea that that's who we are, in our nature, at our core. At our core. Then it says, under these conditions, we can employ our mental faculties with assurance. But it's only in these conditions that if we, before we ever begin, we're talking to God. It, it, see, that's conditional. So without those conditions, we can't properly exercise the will. No. If, if we do, it, it's self-will. Right. I you think know. that's very clear. It's it's either God's will or self-will. Yeah. There isn't any other will. <laughs> you you uh, you might have a, a real good point there, and that something for the people to think about. Either it's your will or God's will. It's self-will or God's will. I have to look at it that way because if I'm trying to rationalize it as being something else, that's just simply not true. Yeah. In thinking about our day, we may face indecision. So he's saying, you know, okay, you're going to have indecision. I mean, you know, people ask, well, should I turn right or should I turn left? Should I go for this job interview or that job? I mean, those kind of things are natural. You know, should I stock the shelves this way or that way? Well, what did your boss say to do? Well, follow the directions. I mean, we have indecision all the time. That's just a natural course of life. You know what I find fun about that today, though, is that it becomes an adventure. It does. When I'm looking at, God, I don't know which way to go or what to do, 
but I'm going to rely upon you, then I'm going to keep the feet moving forward and watch him work. And then it becomes this, oh, that's so cool. It's like, I didn't have to figure that out. I just had to be moving forward. What's the next indicated step? And I don't believe that you'd have that sort of thinking or that sort of experience, either one, unless you've tried it. Mm -hmm. Unless you've actually uh, done the work and job, tried to build this relationship. If you don't have, look, all of us got to the fellowship because we ran our own deal. Yeah. Self will run riot was our motto. We didn't even know that. We didn't even know what that meant when I got here. I didn't know what it meant. No. But after so much of that, the more willingness we are to surrender to him and seek his will and apply the principles of the program, the more free I become. Why would I not want to do that? When it, Every time I do it, regardless of whether there's pain involved or not, I never regret it. I've never regretted doing God's will. It may have been painful. So, yeah, I mean, that's part of learning the process. If you, if you don't go through pain and suffering, how, how do you share with a newcomer? How can you relate to where they're at? Right. So it's, I think it's, yeah. it beca- yeah. you make it an adventure, and it becomes yeah, I exciting. I don't think we're saying we're all... Joyful and happy as we're going through some of these no, experiences, no. but we don't regret them. And there's peace inside. Yeah, you know, you can see the benefit. And the more you do this, the more you can see the benefit of it. And you can always resort to yeah. self will and see how it works. So I, I yeah, I do a oh, lot yeah, of, yeah. I do yeah, a lot of, again, yeah. I do a lot of praying like this. Father, if you want me to 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 accomplish this, to stay the course, give me the strength. Remember what it said in this. The strength to do his will and enter the power cave to carry it out to his will and the power to carry it out. Sometimes I just need the strength to get through it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, it, this reminds me of our friend, Pastor Saeed, who was released from from uh, uh, his captors here yeah, just, there you just, go. just recently. And um, a message I gave it at, at our former church years ago that – you know, if we're going around all the time, you know, wanting God to heal us of everything, and we all, imagine this: what if we all got healed of every infirmity, every body ache, every situation that happened, and we all got healed except for one guy? Who would minister to that one guy? Who could identify with that one guy? Nobody. And here we had this this pastor who did nothing wrong except for love God. And he, he's sitting in, in what was it North Korea, or, or Vietnam, Vietnam, or no? He was in uh, uh, Iran. Oh, that's right, an Iranian prison. Yeah, uh, because of, of his belief in the gospel, beaten. I mean, they would beat him silly, and then he would turn around and hug him. And he would never, never once did he ask for God to deliver him from the prison. It doesn't mean he didn't want to be be out of there, but never once did he ask for God. What he asked was. Allow me this golden opportunity to share your love. That when Paul they they chained yeah. him up, you know, Paul to Silas. a garden. What yeah. did he do? Yeah. He to Started them. singing hymns. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. So, so if you're going through the ringer, it, I you know this. You probably some of you are going to be really mad at this, but it might be the most blessed thing you experience. Here, here's one that I, my spiritual advisor told me. He says. Be thankful for these things that come at you as opportunities to grow. You know, absolutely. And that, it's a, that's really hard to do. But stop and think about this: I had forty-five years of addiction, and God took that and used that to help others. Mm-hmm. Now I don't want people to go out and, and go through forty-five years, you know, of addiction. But you see. If he can do that, what can't he do? I, I've learned over the years that I had to stop being the victim of circumstance or anything. And when I stopped being the victim, I could say, why, God? That's a victim's perspective. No, the question is, what are you trying to teach me, Lord? 
I, I want to learn. This isn't fun and I'm, it's painful, but I know you're trying to teach me something. So if I learn the lesson that you have for me, I then have some experience, strength, and hope to pass on to someone else. Sure. You bet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want to jump ahead here to an area that that's that, that seems to be much confusion around, and this is the whole idea of that that I was taught early on in the fellowship, not from the program, not from the book, but in the fellowship, and it was wrong, and I didn't know that. I believed what I was told. Never pray for yourself. That's what I was told. Uh, and I heard people say, I don't pray for myself anymore, as if that was this great, you know, humble attitude, you know, and, uh, in step 11, and it talks about this, um, uh, it says, we usually conclude the period of meditation, uh, with, with a prayer that we believe talking about meditation. And by the way, if you know how to worry, you know how to meditate. <laughs> um, <laughs> so if you say, I don't know how to meditate. Well, if you're worried about something, yeah, well you do. It's just, you, you've got the wrong focus. Um, the prayer that we be shown all through the day, and there's that attitude of prayer all day long. Uh, and there's that whole idea of the biblical principle, pray without ceasing. doesn't mean that you're praying out loud constantly while you're walking down the street. You know, someone's going to probably put you in a white suit if you're doing that constantly. Uh, but it means this is attitude of prayer to be shown all through the day what our next step is to be, that we be given whatever we need to take care of such problems. We ask especially... For freedom from self-will. So that means there's other things we're asking for, but we especially ask for that. Because when we're bound by self-will, then we can't be of great usefulness to God and our fellows. So we ask especially for freedom from self-will and are careful to make no requests for ourselves only. 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 That's the key word there. Mm -hmm. We may ask for ourselves, however, if others will be helped. Yeah. We are careful never to pray for our own selfish ends. It doesn't say that you don't pray for the things that are the desires of your heart. It doesn't say that. Yeah. I've learned that I can take all my prayers and supplications to God. Right. You know, like I can take them all, you know, to Him. But I think that what we've learned is we're we're not looking for our will, and we're not looking. I I, I did a lot of praying when I first started. And what I found out I was doing one day was that I was saying, okay, God, I'm going to Joe's house to work with Joe, so come on with me and help me and direct me. But you see what I was doing? Mm -hmm. What I was doing is I was asking God to join me in my plans and to do my little thing, say, for my recognition. (laughs) Right. So all of a sudden one day he let me see this, and I went, oh, my goodness. And believe me, you'd be surprised how much he's used that for me to pass along to other people. We really are selfish with our prayers. Oh, my goodness. Sure. You see, we're asking God to do join us in what we want to do or what we think is right instead of seeking his will and the strength to carry that and out. We do it almost automatically. We you wouldn't even realize. See, and you're yeah. talking a lot about that. And that comes from growing in our conscious contact of God Amen. with our relationship with Him. Yeah. I I walked with a guy that that was way more advanced in theology and things like that than me. Just he he was a scholar, but you know what he didn't know how to do was walk with God. Hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I never did him. not believe in God my whole life. I always believed in God. Always. Never didn't. Could throw out a few scriptures. I could throw out a few things, but that didn't mean I had relationship. Right. It took me a long time to realize what the steps were doing was marching me in a very systematic way to have relationship. And that changed my whole world. Uh, one of the things that I hear in meetings, we're talking about the wisdom of the rooms. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I get crazy when I hear certain (laughs) things like, this is a selfish program. (laughs) I'm like, no, it's not a selfish program. That will kill us. It says self-centeredness has to be smashed or it will kill us. Mm -hmm. So it can't be a selfish program. It's a selfless program. But there's so many things 
they pull a sentence or a word out of the program, out of the book, and they turn it into something it's not. Yeah, they build a doctrine around. They build it. a dogma or yeah. a doctrine. Yeah. And we we all we yeah. all we all know uh, some you know uh, uh, what would you call them? Uh, Lone Ranger the- theologians out there that will take one scripture verse and build an entire ministry around one scripture verse. Same thing, and it's yeah, same kind of thing. Yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like it's like one day at a time. It, 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 they'll take one day at a time that platitude, one day at a time that's off the wall, and they'll say, "Well, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't know if I'm going to drink tomorrow or not." Um, it's just one day at a time. Yeah. Well, the book says you have to be done for good and for all. If if you, know. you taste the kind of peace and the kind of freedom that Roger is talking about, th- that will make you the kind of individual that never wants to be in bondage again. Right. I believe. I firmly believe that. Which is yeah. what I think Dr. Bob and Bill and the writers of the, our beautiful book were saying. Mm-hmm. You know, you come and taste and enjoy this, you'll want to yeah. give it a... I, one of my favorite lines is in the Alcoholic Number 3 story where Bill's, you know, with he's with Bill and Henrietta in their kitchen, right? Bill Dotson, Alcoholic Number 3, and Bill's in this kitchen. And Bill Dotson said, I, I, I wanted to know what Bill and Bob had, that this this relief, this sense of peace they had. Mm-hmm. And Bill Wilson looked at Henrietta and said, I'm so grateful that the Lord has cured me of this terrible disease. I just want to keep telling people about it. Yeah. yeah. There's there's yeah. something else that happens to us that we get old. And I've suffered a lot of things because of that. I can't have operations because of my heart and all these sort of things. But now watch this, what the Lord has given me and, and what Alcoholics Anonymous and, and the method I have a fellowship that's built up around me today, that's growing around me, that God showed me how to have a relationship, <clears throat> and I'm being held accountable in a way that I never was before. So I take this medication, and if I take it more than three or four days straight, then I let other people know that, then they become aware, and they walk with me, and I back away for a few days, even if I'm in pain, because Never again do I want to be in bondage to something. The only thing that I was ever placed in bondage to in my life was a spiritual life, and uh, I it it set me free. But everything else has been just absolutely horrible. I, I my, couldn't agree more. <laughs> being bondage to my wife, yeah. it, mm-hmm. it ruined my marriage. To be in bondage to, to drugs. Just got me in a world of trouble and sent me to the penitentiary. Yeah. See, see? But this thing will set you free. You want to be free or you want to be in bondage? It's a simple question. Yeah, how free it's a want- yes or no answer. You want to be free or you want to be in bondage? How, fr- how free do you simple. want to be? You know, how free do you want to be? Um, y- you know, the thing that's so great about this step that a lot of people don't don't even, can't even conceive of because it's all about us. You know, we think it's all about us. This whole journey, actually, from being totally convinced, was all along God's plan to prepare us to help others. This wasn't about us getting sober. Now, we couldn't help others if we were drunk. We had to get that out of the way. But this is all preparation for step 12. This is all preparation for for being of maximum service to God and our fellows. That's what this is about. And we can't do that unless we are walking with the creator of the universe. We can't we're not going to be of maximum service. We may serve to a degree, like the guy that pours the coffee, or the person that's the GSR, or the, the guy that welcomes you at the door. They serve to a degree. But without a walking living relationship with your creator, you're not going to be of maximum, maximum. service. Maximum yeah. service, and this is in preparation. We're we're getting ready to be a maximum if, service. If you're actually doing this and you're learning to a form of you, you excuse me, humility. Yeah. See, it's I don't even say it all. I know. I <laughs> <laughs> see, and you're doing that. Well, then he's learning. You're he's able to work in and through you. See, but he's going to resist you. If you're prideful. Yeah. See, he just seems to doesn't want to work that way. It's not that he can't. 
No. Oh, he can do anything he wants, but he won't. Yeah. That's not Because his he resists yeah. the proud. Mm-hmm. See, and there's a reason for that. And it's, you know, humility is something to be de- de- desired. It really is. But we don't see it. See, it's upside down and backwards. Yeah. So yeah. Go ahead, Bonnie. Yeah. I know where Well, I was going to say, uh, uh, and I love the way he concludes this. And we've skipped over some, some pieces here. Uh, but uh, I think we get the get the, the book of the message here in step 11. And, and he says it again, and this is not to beat ourselves up. We alcoholics are undisciplined. Yeah. You can't fix what you don't acknowledge. You need to acknowledge the fact that, you know, we acknowledge that we were powerless way back when. Um, but now we have to remind ourselves we're just undisciplined. I and mean, that's just the way it is. We, we're human beings and we are, and I don't think it's, it's limited to alcoholics, by the way. I think we just magnify everything. Um, so it's, a, then it gives a solution. So, we let God discipline us in the simple way we have just outlined. Okay. What do they mean? One by, through eleven. Yeah. What do they mean by that? Yeah. Saying that when they're talking about let God do this, it's because we're we're getting a different attitude. Yeah. We're getting a a different relationship. We're learning about humility, where we can go to God with a different heart. See, I never went to God. I, I made plea bargains with Him for crying out loud. Sure. Everything was a negotiation. It's yeah. never helped me, God, yeah. to tell, show me what you want me to do. Yeah. It's like, oh, my God, get me out of this. Yeah, exactly. And then he says it again, like he says at the end of many of the steps. But this is not all. <laughs> and we're like, oh, no. <laughs> there is action and more action. And then he quotes James. So, by the way, if you don't, allow the Bible to be quoted in your AA meeting and you're reading the big book, well, you've already violated that because there's a ton of biblical quotes in here. Uh, Faith without works is dead. Uh, This next chapter, and the chapter you're talking about is chapter 7, Working with Others, is entirely devoted to step 12, or if I were to paraphrase that, is entirely devoted to this principle of faith without works is dead. If, can I say two things about that if yes. we got time? Yes, sir. What they're talking about here is faith produces works. Yep. Works does not produce, produce faith. faith. Right. Absolutely. So fake it till you make it is kind of a bunch of BS, isn't it? <laughs> it really is, in my and, opinion. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Here's the other thing. If you start to live out of what you're calling faith mm-hmm. are the blessings that God has given you. Mm-hmm. Now, here's the key. If I'm operating out of a selfish and self-centered mode, I'm going to see what I can get from you all the time. It's what I can receive. Okay. But if I'm operating out of an altruistic movement, you know, and out of the blessings that's already been given me, you said it. It'll be because I'm operating out of gratitude. Or what's already been given to me, so I'm going to treat you differently. Yeah. Do you see? Yeah. We don't know that until we get to that place, though, until we realize how that That's works. That's right. And then you get the peace. You know, in page 99 in the 12 and 12 the St. Francis prayer is the most altruistic prayer I've ever read. And, of course, Dr. Bob used to read, you know, Sermon on the Mount, frequently in Akron, along with uh, the, the chapter of love. And that needs to be at the core of our of our program. Right. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's in giving that you receive. It, it's not, and fake it till you make it means you're not doing the program. If you're faking it, you're doing what we did our whole life. I was the, you're I was, faking it. I was always faking everything. I faked it when I went to confession. I faked everything I did. You bet. To get right. my will. Right. People, he's telling the truth. You, you <laughs> might not like it, but it's a, it's the truth. There is no fake it till you make it. That's that's an oxymoron. It doesn't even make sense if you write it down and look at it. You can't yeah, make it if God. you're faking it. Right. Right. Oh, God. I, you know, if, if we were going to go down that road, I guess what would be more accurate is act as if. I mean, you know, I can kind I can kind of stomach that. I, you know, yeah. you know, j- put your foot out there. That's different. T- take the step of faith, yeah. faith and put your foot out there. Uh, but that's not faking it because if you're faking it, you would throw your shoe out there, not your foot. 
Exactly. That would be faking it. Exactly. You know, I put my foot out there. Well, there's no action involved in faking it. It's just you're manipulating. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's what a manipulation. I love it. I want to manipulate the situation to make you think I'm doing it, but I'm not. I'm faking it. Yeah, and what are we here for now? This the butte, the back step is almost as big as one. Service, service to the wives, to the to all the other people. There's a lot of things that are being taught me to the employers and to the wives and, and these other chapters in a vision for you yeah. that gives me a real good idea of how to work with other alcoholics and their families. Yeah. But it's not just a book about to the wives. No. No. So no. You, people, <laughs> no. And you hear that, and, and I mean, intelligent people are telling you that. And it's because they're not working the program. They're not learning to be of service. They don't care to be of service. Right. Their right. heart is not there. They're going to meetings. Oh, gosh. I don't want to get in trouble for this. but Oh, go ahead. I, we're not here, <laughs> take radio. We're not we here to time. teach people to be meeting-dependent, step-dependent, or sponsor-dependent. We're here to teach them to be God dependent. It says in Amen. the book, God either is or he isn't. That's what was right. your choice to be? A price had to be paid. That's right. It's real simple. <laughs> so we'll give you a little tickler. Give me the old tickler. For I like this guy. I know. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm to get him a Learjet and he fly yeah, up here every yeah. week. I'm flying home with him. <laughs> I'm going to be the baggage handler. Well, chapter seven is working with others. And this is step 12. And uh, the, the very first sentence, by the way. Um, has been misunderstood. I'm just going to give you a little teaser here for next week. Has been misunderstood. Practical experience shows that nothing will so much ensure immunity from drinking as intensive work with other alcoholics. And here's how it's been misunderstood in my view. Intensive work with work, uh, work with other alcoholics means that I take them to the meeting. I pick them up and take them to a meeting. Um, I show up at the meeting and I pour coffee. I serve as GSR. Or that's going to keep me sober. Yeah. That 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 my intensive work with another alcoholic by giving him a ride to a meeting is going to keep me sober. That's not what it's talking about. It, this is making an assumption that the person who's working with the other alcoholic understands 1 through 11 and is getting ready to do 12, and they've experienced, by the way, you cannot have a spiritual awakening as a result of steps you haven't done. So when somebody says, well, hey, you've done step two. You can sponsor somebody now. I'm like, are you kidding me? What? Why don't you just give him a gun and tell him to shoot the poor sucker? Calm down, Monty. Oh, I just get so... <laughs> I'm with Monty. I, I'm with Monty. It, I, it, yeah. You know, so it's making an assumption because I worked with other alcoholics all the time. We both were drinking on the bar at the bar stool, talking about how we needed to change our lives, give our lives back to God, how we needed to work these steps, and we were drinking through the whole you don't think I was working with another alcoholic? We were working together. Mm -hmm. You betcha. <laughs> I've I've had a few people that I've sponsored over the years that uh they got into service work real heavy and they become very dependent. Now I'm not saying they didn't stay sober. And I'm not saying that that they they didn't learn a lot. They did the picnics. They cooked. They <clears throat> gave people rides. They took people to detox. They did all these things. But if this is really a progressive illness, and they go out, see, they can't come back and do the same thing. And then they fight it for the next ten years, wondering why they they can't stay sober again. Right. Look, I believe that self-will run riot can be when you're not drinking and you get so self-willed into service in the fellowship. That has nothing to do necessarily with working with God. That's right. It doesn't. I mean, you can be doing it because it makes you feel good, but that doesn't mean you're sharing the program. But if you're doing it just for what it's doing, it, it, it's helping you to stay sober. But this thing gets, you know, I'm talking about, when I they talk about progressive, I think it can be. I'm talking about sober. Yes. Oh, sure. Oh, you bet. absolutely. That, that, you bet. Because that well, core thing, that listen, selfish and self-centered, gets been in there. Listen to listen to the step itself. That there's a prerequisite for carrying the message. Uh, Having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, it doesn't say. <laughs> step twelve doesn't say we carry the message so the alcoholics will suffer. I mean, but that's what a lot of people are doing. No, 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 no. Having had a spiritual awakening, and by the way, an awakening is different than an experience. 
I dropped acid and had a spiritual experience. whoop de doo You know, I get goosebumps when somebody finally admits that they're sick. But that's not an awakening. You know what my first five years of Alcoholics Anonymous was all about? Telling people about spiritual experiences? Is when my car was rolling over and I was yelling, Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the steps are not talking about that. Yeah. No, they are not. <laughs> no, but it, see, that's what I believed. Yeah, well, sure. Well, that's what many of us are told. And they don't know the difference between spiritual no. awakening and spiritual mm-hmm. experiences. Right. And, mm-hmm. and we have, you know, we, we just have a lot of folks in today's 12-step closed-minded discussion meetings that don't know this literature. Some meetings, it's not even allowed in the rooms, you know. And why? Because we want to do it our way. But see, we can't change, I don't believe, the whole meetings. We can't. But if we'll, if we'll listen... And we'll make the approach to people on a one-on-one basis. I can talk to him. I, there's a couple guys that I have right now. I told him, listen, I'm telling you guys, I have a solution to your problem. Right. I really, really do. That's what Dr. Bob said. Yeah. Yeah. We have a solution that will never fail, he said. So, yeah. we go, so do we go to the meetings <laughs> to listen to where we can be of, of help, and then we can make the approach. And, and listen, folks out there, and, and we're running into overtime a little bit. That's okay. We got a closing song like we do every week. But I have to tell you, if, if you've done this thing and you're walking with God and you've had this experience and you're keeping it to yourself, shame on you. Yeah. And may I say thank you, Roger. Well, thank you. Oh, what a pleasure. What a I blessing was, to I, be here. Well, yeah. I, was I will get a Learjet and fly back. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Not. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, once again, and, and before we do this, uh, I want to thank Roger, Roger for being here. So we have some, some, some gifts for Roger. Um, we have uh, the book, uh, My Mind Has a Mind of Its Own. This is, this is an, an amazing story uh, who a man who, sh- by G- uh, Gordon Rostin, he should have been burned to death. Uh, it, it's an amazing story of of his journey through uh, addiction and alcoholism and recovery, and then uh, Mike D's book, Letting God In. One alcoholic talks to another about a step four. I told you about this book. I Man, I told you it's nice and thin, so you that's, can read it. That's yeah. a good. Book. My kind of book, nice and thin. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to get, give you that. So now you, now you don't yeah. have to order on Amazon. And then, of course, uh, we want to give him the CD. And by the way, you can get this CD as well called Learning to Live Again by Ray White. And uh, Ray uh, supports uh, Take 12 Radio by donating these CDs. Uh, they're just $11. If you will go to Take12Radio.com and click on the Donate button and do not donate any more or any less than $11. That way I'll automatically know. You don't even have to write in, I want the CD. I'll know that that's what you're doing. And, and we'll send you this CD. So that, that's for you, Roger, for being on the show today. Thank you very much. Absolutely. And from that CD... Uh, We're going to listen to this song by Ray White called None of My Business. And then we'll come back and sign off. Here's Ray White. They tell me you've been talking. You don't like the way I'm walking down this road of recovery. you've been saying it's just a game i'm playing on my way to reality i don't need your opinion self-righteous decision on the kind of man you think i should be i don't need no witness to my spiritual fitness ain't none of my business what you think about me If you're not buying Simple fact that I'm just trying To regain some happiness So go ahead with your condemnation Self-assured evaluation Makes you feel you're better I guess I don't need your opinion 
self-righteous decision On the kind of man you think I should be I don't need no witness In my spiritual fitness Ain't none of my business what you think about me On the kind of man you think I should be I don't need no witness To my spiritual fitness Ain't none of my business what you think about me Ain't none of my business what you think about me All right, so our next broadcast, this is the Monty Man along with Bruce, Roger, and please pray for Eve. We're wishing God's perfect serenity for you. Bye-bye now. This has been a broadcast of Take 12 Recovery Radio and KHLT Recovery Broadcasting. Kitty, 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 kitty. <laughs>